on World News Tonight. End to COVID? After three years of the global epidemic, the WHO is hopeful that COVID-19 could not be a health emergency next year. Into the finale. France's win sets up for an explosive final and the much-anticipated Messi-Mbappe duel. Raging winds. Tornadoes and gale force winds swept through the southern United States in a rare occurrence of winter storms. And Roman lights. Rome and Vatican City have been lit up as the Christmas season approaches with its landmarks wreathed in sparkling decorations. This is Adhaderana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Suzanne Chanelli. Good evening and thank you for joining us on World News Tonight. Now, the head of the WHO says that he's hopeful the COVID-19 pandemic will no longer be a global emergency sometime in 2023. His remarks coming as China, after lifting its strict zero COVID policy, is seeing an explosive surge in cases. Experts cite the low vaccination rate in the country as one of the primary reasons. According to World Health Organization Director General Dr. Tedros Adenon Ghebreyesus on Wednesday, he is hopeful the COVID-19 pandemic will no longer be considered a global emergency sometime next year. We're hopeful that at some point next year, we will be able to say that COVID-19 is no longer a global health emergency. His remarks come as a WHO body meets every few months to decide whether COVID-19, which has killed more than 6.6 .6 million people globally, still represents a public health emergency of international concern. Despite signs of optimism, other WHO officials say there's still a long way to go. Although you did hear the DG say we still see between eight and 10,000 deaths reported each week. These deaths are largely happening among people who are not vaccinated or haven't received the full number of doses that are recommended for them. So we feel there's much more work to be done. In China, the country is seeing an explosive surge in COVID-19 cases shortly after it lifted its strict zero COVID policy. While the WHO says the virus was spreading intensively in China long before the lifting of restrictions, it's also due to the low number of vaccinations. Many experts have cited China's trust in its zero COVID policy as the reason for the low vaccination rate, especially among senior citizens, the group most vulnerable to the virus. China began pivoting away from its signature zero COVID policy this month following protests against the economically damaging curbs long pushed by President Xi Jinping. We have some good news for you. South Korean researchers developed a new PCR testing method that digitally detects whether one has contracted the coronavirus. This method is not only faster, but can also detect other diseases, including swine flu and Zika at the same time. PCR testing is something that's been added to our lives since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. While we rely on PCR tests to check for sure whether we've contracted virus, the time it takes for the results to come out remains one of the downsides. The results are usually sent the next day. This is because it takes several bulky and heavy machines four hours to detect whether the virus is present in the sample it is analyzing. However, a team of South Korean researchers came up with a much quicker way to carry out the process using wireless technology. What's key is the way it uses coding to identify specific types of virus. Researchers say the new testing method can successfully detect four viruses including COVID-19, flu, swine flu, and the Zika virus all at once and in just 40 minutes. With the application of wireless technology, different codes are input through different combinations. Because the codes are all different, they can differentiate without confusion and thus detect multiple strains of viruses at the same time. The new device also consists of simple composition, resulting in being 40 percent smaller than the testing devices commonly used. Developers also say it can be easily localized as most parts are interchangeable. While the global market share of COVID-19 testing kits is expected to shrink starting in 2023, this new device will have an edge over its competitors due to time efficiency and other features. The developers expect it to be fully commercialized in the next two years and hope to contribute to boosting the nation's ability to counter various kinds of viruses. 
United States Africa Leaders Summit kicked off with a focus on the vital role of civil society and the strength of uh, the African diaspora communities in the United States. The second day focused on increasing two-way trade and investment in the U.S. Africa Business Forum. CEOs and private sector leaders from over 300 American and African companies convened with the heads of the delegation to catalyze investment in critical sectors including health, infrastructure, energy, agribusiness and digital. Five billion dollars, a US pledge of commitment to Africa over the next three years that promises to tackle food security and climate change. 49 countries gathered in Washington for the US-Africa Leaders Summit the first of its kind since 2014. First on the U.S. agenda, economic aid in the form of student exchange programs and investment to African businesses. Good morning, everyone. We will be announcing additional investments to make it easier for students to participate in exchange programs between our countries to increase trade opportunities for members of the African diaspora and to support African entrepreneurs and small businesses. But it's not all about lifting the economy. China's driven investment in Africa, coupled with Russia's arms sales and increased mercenary deployment, means the two nations are expanding their footprint on the continent. This poses a threat to U.S. interests, who is trying to assert its influence there. Regarding Russia and China, the, you know, the PRC, we're witnessing the PRC expand its footprint uh, in the, on, on the continent uh, on a daily basis. And as they do that, they're also expanding their economic influence. In turning to Russia, uh, we see Russia continuing to peddle uh, cheap weapons. Uh, some of that was mentioned uh, before by one of our, our senior leaders here. Uh, and also, um, we see Russia employing mercenaries across the continent, and, and that is destabilizing as well. Following requests from Senegal and South Africa, Biden is expected to push for the African Union joining the G20 group as a permanent member. The group, comprised of the world's largest economies, could provide some economic protection for the African Union from China and Russia's so-called debt traps. Peru has declared a nationwide state of emergency amid a week of protest and political upheaval following the removal and arrest of former President Pedro Castillo. Peruvian Defense Minister announced the new 30-day measure, which he said involved the suspicion of freedom of movement and assembly and could include a curfew due to acts of vandalism and violence, including roadblocks. After a week of violent protests following the ouster of former President Pedro Castillo, Peru's defense minister on Wednesday announced a nationwide state of emergency. The 30-day declaration grants new powers to the military, allowing soldiers to assist police, and could mean the suspension of certain freedoms, including the right to assembly. The mass demonstrations erupted after Castillo was impeached on December 7th and arrested after illegally trying to dissolve the Andean nation's Congress. He was charged with rebellion and conspiracy and Castillo's former vice president, Dina Boluarte, was sworn into office. Protesters have blockaded highways, set fires to buildings, and invaded airports. According to authorities, six people have died in clashes with the police. Meanwhile, prosecutors said they were seeking 18 months of pretrial detention for Castillo. Peru's Supreme Court met to consider the request, but later suspended the session until Thursday. Supporters say Castillo is being mistreated. Pedro Castillo should have been released today. Today marks the seventh day of his preliminary detention. He should have been released at 1.30 p.m., but yesterday at midnight the prosecutor asked for 18 months of preliminary prison for Castillo. Right now the president has no lawyers. We need international help, please. Boluarte, speaking to reporters from the presidential palace, called for peace and said, quote, we can't have dialogue if there's violence between us adding that elections could be moved forward to December 2023 from April 2024, a date she had pledged earlier. The vote is currently slated for 2026 when Castillo's term would have ended. Castillo has gained support from fellow regional leftist leaders, including Mexican President Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador, who criticized his removal as undemocratic. 
After coming through a tough match against Morocco, the French will now meet Argentina in Sunday's final with the chance to become the first side to retain the title since Brazil in 1962. Now, crowds have been cheering across France ever since and now we have Abu Dhabi World News Special Correspondent Chetana Dharmaratna from Normandy in France who joins us now for further details. Chetana, how is the atmosphere in France so far? Yes, Shanali. Supporters poured into Paris, freezing Champs Elysees Boulevard after the World Cup semi final, which for the millions tugged at the heel string as Le Bleu won 2 0 to reach the final for a second time in a row. Fans were flanked by hundreds of police trucks securing the area as they let off fireworks and flares to the sound of honks and cheers. Crowds of supporters were seen entering the Christmas decorated boulevard after the final whistle, where authorities were brazing of tens of thousands despite the temperature around zero degrees Celsius. It is Lionel Messi's final World Cup game and Sunday is the last day that could top it all, providing the perfect end to history with Argentina. Anything else would feel despairing and hollow for the great sporting icon of his country. The World Cup final could be one of the ages and on the evidence of what we have seen in Qatar, it is too close to call. It could even come down to one moment of genius from the two players most likely to provide it. The World Cup comes down to this, France versus Argentina in the eyes of many, Mbappe versus Messi. It's the World Cup final many predicted and the personal duel between the two greats many craved. Back to you, Shanali. Yes, Chetana, let's hope for the best. And thank you. That was other than a world news special correspondent reporting from Normandy in France, Chetana Dharmaratna. Let's go into a short commercial break. We'll be back soon with more world news. Welcome back to World News Tonight. Now, British Foreign Minister James Cleverly said that China has removed six officials from Britain who uh, police wanted to question over the treatment of a man who said that he was kicked and punished wi while protesting outside the Chinese consulate in Manchester. Two months after violence broke out at China's consulate in Manchester, Beijing has removed six of its officials from Britain, including the consul general himself. The UK Foreign Minister James Cleverley said the removal of the officials came after a police request to interview them over the incident. The October protests took place on the first day of China's Party Congress. Demonstrators had gathered outside the consulate in northwest England to protest President Xi's rule. Video showed one of the protesters, Bob Chan, being dragged inside the grounds of the consul and beaten. Chan later gave a press conference and said he suffered bruising to his eye, head, neck and all over his back. In a written statement released Wednesday, Cleverly said, quote, I am disappointed that these individuals will not be interviewed or face justice. Later, he outlined to British broadcasters what action had been taken. We all saw the disturbing footage of the incident outside the Chinese uh, consulate in uh, Manchester. In response to that, we initiated a process based on our adherence to the rule of law. In response to our request, uh, the Chinese uh, government have now removed from the UK uh, those uh, officials, including the Consul General uh, himself. But the Chinese embassy has hit back, saying Britain had failed to protect its staff, adding it launched its own representations with Britain over the incident. It said the Consul General had returned to China under a, quote, normal rotation of Chinese consular officials. Britain and China's relationship has soured in recent years over issues such as Hong Kong and the treatment of the Uyghur Muslim minority in Xinjiang. More than 30 million Americans across the nation's northern tier were under winter weather advisories or warnings while tornadoes swept the south as a deadly winter storm continued its damaging march through the country, killing at least three people. Tonight, a huge tornado churning across New Orleans. There you can see a very large tornado. Uh, now we've got the power flashes. Get to your safe place right now. The twister striking the Lower Ninth Ward and parts of St. Bernard Parish. Damage unknown at this oh hour. God. It's part of a deadly tornado outbreak, devastating parts of the state. 
twisters tearing across roadways and ripping off roofs. In New Iberia, police confirming two tornadoes touched down. Authorities there helping people trapped inside debris. We do have several units from several agencies on scene. They are rescuing people who are trapped. More than 7,000 homes losing power. Others no longer standing. Authorities say at least three people are dead, including an eight-year-old boy. That whole trailer park gone. In Keithville, families are now left picking up the pieces. So far this week, at least 32 tornadoes have been reported across four states. Meteorologists say warmer temperatures in recent years are partially to blame for the growing number of winter twisters and could be pushing the infamous Tornado Alley farther east. This week's deadly southern storms, part of the major system pushing its way across the country and stretching all the way to Minnesota. Tonight, blizzard conditions are pummeling parts of the Dakotas. Storms there already dumping two feet of snow with more continuing to fall. All part of a dangerous and now deadly storm system that's not slowing down. A Bahamian judge denied FTX founder Sam Bankman freed bail after U.S. prosecutors accused the 30 year old of misappropriation billions of dollars in what has been described as one of America's biggest financial frauds. A heavy security detail escorted Sam Bankman fried the founder of the now defunct cryptocurrency exchange FTX, from a Bahamas courthouse to jail. It was the 30-year-old's first in-person public appearance since the spectacular collapse of the cryptocurrency exchange he founded. Once one of the biggest names in crypto, Bankman Fried of Mast a Fortune valued at $26.5 billion as he wrote a cryptocurrency boom to build FTX into one of the world's largest exchanges before it abruptly collapsed this year. Now he's facing the full weight of the U.S. criminal justice system. This is one of the biggest financial frauds in American history. After Bankman Fried's arrest in the Bahamas, U.S. Attorney Damian Williams detailed the charges the former CEO is facing in New York. Bankman Fried and his co-conspirators stole billions of dollars from FTX customers. He used that money for his personal benefit, including to make personal investments and to cover expenses and debts of his hedge fund, Alameda Research. U.S. authorities said Bankman Fried used client and investor money to buy properties and even make political donations. Really at the heart of these allegations is, an, is that Sam Bankman Freed was lying to investors, to customers, and to lenders. Moira Penza is a legal analyst and partner at Wilkinson Steckloff in New York. She said that despite relatively few regulations governing the high-risk world of cryptocurrencies, the crimes of which Bankman Freed stands accused are relatively basic. The government seems to really be basing its case on simple fraud. So it doesn't matter whether you're talking about crypto versus a different security. When you lie to people in order to get their money, that is a crime. And it doesn't matter what the security at play is. Bankman Fried has previously apologized to customers and acknowledged oversight failings at FTX, but said he does not personally think he has any criminal liability. The former FTX CEO's attorney indicated his client may fight efforts at extradition, Meanwhile, he's set to be housed here, a facility known as Fox Hill Prison. A 2021 State Department report described conditions as, quote, harsh, citing overcrowding, rodent infestation, and prisoners relying on buckets as toilets. Local authorities say conditions have since improved. Bankman Fried is expected to appear in court again in the Bahamas on February 8th. Stephen Boz, a charismatic hip-hop dancer and television personality known as Twitch, who rose to fame on the reality show So You Think You Can Dance before becoming a regular on the Ellen DeGeneres show, had died in a motel room in Los Angeles. He was a regular on the Ellen show for years. Over a decade ago, I met someone who changed my life. Stephen Twitch Boss. Twitch was the DJ, but more. Ellen's favorite dancer and partner, eventually executive producer. When the show was ending back in May, Twitch reflected on his time there on Today. It was so emotional. And, and what was crazy, though, it was like, you know, it was a lot of the, the little things that started to really get me, not even the big moments. As recently as Sunday, Twitch was dancing with his wife, Allison Hoker, in front of their Christmas tree. They'd just posted celebrating their ninth wedding anniversary. 
friends and fans, stunned by the news he took his own life Tuesday. He was the backbone of our family, the best husband and father, and an inspiration to his fans, Holker said. To say he left a legacy would be an understatement. His death adding to a devastating trend, suicide rates up nationally over the last two decades, the highest spike in recent years among black Americans. Back in May, Twitch was overcome talking about his time on The Ellen Show. You gave me a place where I can just be myself. When we say goodbye after the show, we both say love you. He says love you much, and I say love you. And so he's never going to be out of my life. Today, Ellen writing, I'm heartbroken. Twitch was pure love and light. To many following along on social media, the 40-year-old father of three seemed so full of joy, a reminder that pain can remain hidden. Today, his wife writing, Stephen, we love you, we miss you, and I will always save the last dance for you. Welcome back to World News Tonight, and for more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. A planned routine spacewalk by two Russian cosmonauts aboard the International Space Station was called off after flight controllers noticed a stream of particles spewing from a docked Soyuz spacecraft. A Turkish court has sentenced the mayor of Istanbul to more than two and a half years in prison on charges of insulting members of the Supreme Electoral Council. The court also imposed a political ban on a key opposition politician which could lead to his removal from office in Turkey's larger city. Diplomats and humanitarian workers say that across Africa, from east to west, people are experiencing a food crisis that is bigger and more complex than the continent has ever seen. Iran was ousted from a United Nations women's group for policies contrary to the rights of women and girls, a move proposed by the United States after Tehran's brutal crackdown on protests sparked by the death of a young woman in custody. A small boat loaded with migrants heading for British shores from France capsized in the freezing waters of the English Channel, resulting in four deaths, the British government said. And that's all from us from World News Tonight. Join us again tomorrow for more news around the globe. And in case you missed to watch any of the stories we add tonight, you can always rewatch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. The eternal city of the Vatican has been readied for the festivities from its botanical garden where children and adults explored nearly a mile of flowers, hedges and trees in the enchanted gardens to the sacrality of St. Peter's Square where a giant Christmas tree and a nativity scene brings the spirit of Christmas to the home of the Christian world. Thank you for watching. Stay safe and have a good night.